Okay, so you spent about a thousand bucks on your brand new Vitus drone. I'm going to try and show you how to operate it safely and properly and get a nice, beautiful establishing shot of this lovely little Gothic church here. I don't know if it's really a Gothic church, but we've got a lot of churches around here, so let's go ahead and see if we can get a nice establishing shot with this. One of the main things you're going to do with an aircraft like this is get establishing shots of buildings and things like that. If you're in the film industry or TV industry or if you watch any TV show that's been made ever in the last five years, you will see a drone shot in there. So let's open up our Vitus drone here, get everything set up, and walk through some of the safety procedures here. First off, we're going to want to turn on our Devo 7 transmitter. And before you ever even turn your aircraft or your transmitter on, it's 100% oblig obligatory that you read all of your instructions. So I want you to know what every button does, what every feature on your aircraft is before you fly something like this because this weighs about as much as a brick and it hangs in the air exactly the way that bricks don't. So if something goes wrong, you've got a brick falling out of the sky at oh no, 400 meters or so. That could be uh, quite devastating to anybody standing down below. So. This thing uh, does require FAA registration to fly, so just go spend five bucks, register on the FAA's website. Put your registration number on your aircraft. I've got mine up inside my battery compartment here. And like I said, just go through, watch every one of the instructional videos that Walk Here has published so that you know how to calibrate your gyro, so that you know what all your buttons do. You don't really want to get up into the air and not know safety procedures on how to get your aircraft home. This aircraft basically will fly itself. This is actually a drone. A lot of people call their aircraft drones, but you can't really call it a drone unless it flies itself. And this one has GPS on it. It has an altimeter. It has optical flow, navigation sensors, which is a camera on the bottom, which takes a picture of the ground and uses that to position itself. It has infrared sensors on the left, right, front and bottom and it also uses those to avoid the ground and walls and so forth so it has a lot of different features on it and it really does have the ability to fly itself so basically at the press of a button this aircraft can return home and that's a really nice feature if it ever gets lost and that's number one safety procedure to know is if you can't see your aircraft if it is out of your line of sight and you need to get it back home you're just going to want to quickly switch from auto mode to manual mode or just hold the return home key until it beeps. If it's running a program, like if you're doing waypoint navigation or if you're circling around something, it's really a good idea to switch from auto mode to manual mode and then hit the home button. That will cancel out any programs that are running. <coughs> there are uh, three modes on this aircraft. Auto mode is going to have the automatic GPS, the altimeter, it's going to use the um, optical avoidance, and it's going to fly at about 5 meters per second. Sports mode is going to be just the same, but it's going to be 10 meters per second, and of course manual mode is going to turn off the GPS and all of that. So let's go ahead and turn on the transmitter first, and then we're going to turn on our aircraft. Move this case out of the way because right now this aircraft is searching for GPS satellites. And I'm going to pull out my phone because I have downloaded the Walk Here drone app. And I'm going to go into settings first before I open the app. And I'm going to look at the Wi Fi and make sure Walk Here Ground is connected and is ready to go. The password is 12345678900. So now that we are connected, let's go ahead and click go to connect. And this is going to give us all of our data, like how many satellites we have. We're going to see our map right here. So there we are right now. Here is our map. We have the ability to go in and do circle flight where it will just do a steady slow circle around something. Waypoint navigation where I can go through and add waypoints like so 
and then click play and it will follow that path. And let's go ahead and exit out of here because we're not going to do waypoint navigation quite yet. But we see that we have our video signal has connected. We see that we do not have any GPS satellites right now. It is at zero right now. It takes oh, about a minute or so for us to get our GPS satellite. So let's take a look at some of the other features. There's my lovely daughter there. We can switch between still videos and take a photo like that or start recording video like this and of course stop recording video like so and we are at four GPS satellites right now we can also go into our settings here and we're going to want to look at our devices and make sure all of our sensors are calibrated so our gyro is calibrated, our compass is calibrated accelerometer is all calibrated. Once we have about eight GPS satellites, the red light on the back of the quad will start blinking for us. So we should just about be ready to go. We see our battery meter up here for our aircraft. Once it gets down to H, it will automatically return home. Or if you lose the aircraft signal, it'll also return home. And let's see, we've got our transmitter power and signal. And let's see, let's go ahead and hook this phone up onto the transmitter here. You can also hook a tablet up to this, which I strongly suggest using a tablet if you're gonna be doing video outside. Actually, it's probably better to get a standalone 5.8 gigahertz video monitor of your own. Because unfortunately, there is no video out on this transmitter. That's really the only thing I can fault Walkira for on this aircraft, is there is no video out. But we see that our GPS is ready. We see the red light blinking on the back of the quad. It is ready. I have already checked all of the nuts on each one of the rotors to make sure they're tight. I removed the protector from the front of the gimbal. Now the shot that I'm going to want to get is of this beautiful little church right here and I'm going to want to try and keep the aircraft from not flying over any houses or anything like that so my path is going to basically be along the front of the church here. So we're just going to try and keep it up above the sidewalk here so let's go ahead and start the aircraft to arm the aircraft and disarm the aircraft. This is one thing that is very important to remember to start the blade spinning or to stop the blade spinning. Hold the transmitter sticks like that. And you'll see our obstacle avoidance actually turns on as soon as we arm the aircraft so it can see the ground on the left and the right. And as soon as I start to cover up a little bit there, you'll see I can just go ahead and let go of the transmitter stick and it will keep its position right there. even though we got gusts of wind blowing by here and there. Now, if I put an obstacle in front of it, let's see if it will avoid the obstacle, it does. So, that's your obstacle avoidance right there. Just using the infrared sensor. So you can see it works pretty reliably. But if you're flying around walls and buildings, it'll usually keep, oh, about a meter away from whatever is around. I'm going to switch it into manual mode, and let's just fly it around for just a second. See how she flies. Very smooth. Very fast. Not going to be doing any FPV racing with it, obviously, but... That's not what this is designed for. Wakira does make a number of FPV racers like the Runner and the Rodeo 150. So it flies really nice. It's very smooth. Let's go into sport mode here. That's the air brake. If you let off the controls, it will automatically stop itself. Now, let's see what 
There's 10 meters per second there. That is full speed. There's a full speed 10 meter per second flyby. In sport mode. Right, there's his air brakes. The air brakes work pretty good. You let off the transmitter and he will stop himself where he is at. Now on the camera here, on the uh, transmitter controls here, you have the gimbal control, which you can use to move the camera up and down, and your exposure control. And let's see if the gimbal control and exposure control can work. So you can see I can adjust my exposure a little bit. I can tilt my gimbal down and get the charge in shot there. Okay, I'm going to go up and back and over here and let's go ahead and get this church into the shot as I'm going to want it to be as I pass by so I'm basically just going to do your basic establishing shot where I am just going to go flying in front of the church as smooth as I can and I'm just going to hold the right stick down as I go in front of the church like this and let's go ahead and I'm going to set it back up at the start and I'm going to go into auto mode because I want it to be a little bit smoother. And I can even go one further and go into what's called aerial mode. Let me see if I can set this shot back up here at the beginning there. Okay. So I'm going to go into aerial mode here which is going to make it as smooth as it can be. I'm going to go ahead and start recording the video and I'm going to post this raw 4K video for you guys. So it's going to start right here. All right, and then we're just going to go panning by the church. So you could have your bride and groom running out of the front of the church there or be doing your repair show or your architecture show or any TV show ever basically. I have a drone pilot on staff who is getting shots like this. So that is going to be 90% of what you're going to do is you're going to set your aircraft up. You're going to aim your gimbal like that. And then you're just gonna, let's get over even a little bit further here. Okay, we'll tilt the gimbal up just a little bit. Okay, now I just want a smooth panning shot across. So I'm just gonna hold the right stick and just keep it panning across. And there's our just nice, beautiful, smooth establishing shot. Now once you have accomplished your goal, acquired your shot, and you are ready to return home, you can just hold the home key. It will beep at us. The aircraft will face its direction that it took off in, and it will start to come home. So come to me, Vitus Drone, please come home and auto land yourself. He's going to use the GPS, the altimeter, the optical flow sensor, the obstacle avoidance, all in concert to slowly land himself. And it really doesn't take him too terribly long. He's coming back in for a landing. All right. And that's not too terribly far from where he took off from. That's about a meter or so, and he'll turn his rotors off. Again, if you ever need to turn the rotors on or off, just hold the sticks down in both corners. Let's do two other shots that you're regularly going to do. Let's go ahead and point the camera straight down. Let's arm the rotors, and let's just shoot straight up. Okay, rotors armed, and I'm just going to hold straight up. And I'm just not going to let go of the throttle. We're just going to get that nice, big, straight pull-out shot. I have an altitude limiter set at 100 meters. So that is as high up as he's going to go. Once he reaches 100 meters, he is at 92 meters, 97, 98, 100 meters right there. And even though I'm holding up, that's as high up as he's going to go. You'll see he has locked up about 100.4 meters there. 
didn't take them too terribly long to get up there. Let's see if we can gimbal up just a little bit here and take a look at the town. We'll just spin it around really quick. Do a nice little spin around. And if you ever lose your video signal or you're too far away to see where your aircraft is at, don't forget you can open up the map and use the map itself to actually fly with because I can see where I'm at, I can see where the aircraft is at, I can see which way he's facing. So even if I can't see the aircraft, I can still fly. So let's go ahead and bring it back down. He is up there. Isn't he? I can actually fly four times that height and still be maintaining FAA regulations because your height ceiling is 400 meters. And we're going to try and do one more shot with him, which is going to be a circle spinning shot. We're going to use the circle feature to see if we can circle around the church here. So. Let's go ahead and face the church. And I'm going to go ahead and bring him right above the steeple. Because that's going to be the center point of our circle. Right about there. About five meters away from the uh, center point of our circle is where we want to be to get our object set. Let's go ahead and open up the map here and go open up the circle feature. We're gonna turn that on. We're gonna hit start. And then I'm gonna pull back and define my circle radius. Six meters, seven meters, eight, nine, 10 meters. Okay, my circle radius is defined. Now I'm gonna start it spinning on the circle. Well, I'm gonna go up just a little bit higher. Make sure I avoid all the trees. Point the gimbal down just a tiny little bit, okay. Now I'm going to start it spinning on the circle and tell it how fast I want it to go. All right, it'll go about that fast and then I let go and it will keep going in that circle until I tell it to stop. So that's how you get those nice, beautiful, circular, smooth establishing shots. And again, all of this raw 4K video will be posted for you guys to check out. It's uh, royalty free, so if you want to download this and use it in anything, you're more than welcome to do so but as you see there you go nice big beautiful circle keeping the church in shot and of course the obstacle avoidance will help us avoid that that uh, steeple there if we got too close to it but whenever you are ready to stop your circle just go ahead and either switch it into manual mode or go up into your map and hit exit and then he will stop wherever he is at and as you can see, that is the Vitus drone. He also does do waypoint navigation, but we are starting to run a little long on this video here. So we'll come back and show you guys some of the waypoint navigation and some of the other features. But for now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and hold the home button and let him come home. Hey, look, I can see myself. Hi, me. Hello. So he is bringing himself back home. We didn't And you can go back through with the app and preview your videos so if you don't have a 4k video player you can actually exit out of the app and go through uh, look at media look at videos and you can actually preview the video that you just shot so that's a really nice feature there and we'll see if we can scroll through it well it has to convert it before it can preview it but 
Anyway, that is the Vitus drone. I think it works rather well. Now that we have landed our drone, we're going to want to go ahead and turn our drone off before we turn our transmitter off. Another little safety procedure that is always very important to keep in mind. Let's see where our battery is at. We've used about 50% of our battery during that flight. You're going to get about 25 minutes of flight from one of these smart batteries. And you're going to get about, oh, three or four flights with your transmitter before you need to recharge it. And the aircraft's battery transmitter and air, aircraft uh, battery transmitter are both the same charger. I mean, the, uh, the battery charger and the transmitter charger are the same charger. So go ahead and fold everything back up. Don't forget to take your little rubber legs off. Like so. You know, I have to say, walk here, put together a really nice little drone. It is um, less expensive than a DJI Mavic. You know, it's actually not as big and fat as the Mavic is. The DJI Mavic is a lot wider than this is. And, you know, neither the DJI Mavic or the uh, Walkira Bytus drone are really something you can put in your pocket and, uh, you know, take out to the field. But they are small enough to quickly and easily stow up and go out and do some quick aerial photography. Now, of course, don't forget to put your gimbal protector back on. This will keep the brushless motors from banging into things. Slap everything back in your case. And there you go. That's about how long it takes get a couple of good shots of your nice little gothic church there as always we appreciate you guys tuning in to rc 101 with the dallas flyer don't forget to subscribe stay tuned for more